This module will cover the design and performance checks necessary to implement a right turn bypass lane as part of a roundabout. The necessity for a right turn bypass lane should be determined as part of the traffic analysis for the intersection. Bypass lanes can be implemented at opening day of the roundabout or as necessary for a future design year. There are two types of right turn bypass lanes for roundabouts. The roundabout example here depicts both types. In the lower left of this example is a free flow bypass lane where vehicles have the ability to make a right turn without needing to yield to vehicles exiting the roundabout. The second example in the upper right is a yielding bypass lane in which vehicles turning right are required to yield to vehicles exiting the roundabout. For today's discussion, we will primarily focus on partial yielding bypass lanes. When it comes to the design of a right turn bypass lane, there are several factors that the designer should consider, including bypass lane dimensions, entry angle, diversion from the circuitry road, and pedestrian accommodations. For the bypass lane dimensions, the width of the bypass lane should typically range from 20 feet to 24 feet from curb face to curb face, with a two foot gutter pan on each side. This follows similar considerations to a single lane roundabout entry with recommended in the GDOT roundabout design guide. This width is based upon Green Book guidance to accommodate the passing of stalled vehicles. The next design factor is turning angle at the point of entry for the bypass lane. The bypass lane should be aligned to minimize head turn angle of vehicles as they approach the yield line. As such, the approach angle should be set at 75 degrees or higher. Additionally, the alignment of the bypass lane should be snagged by the splitter island on the adjacent leg so that vehicles using the bypass lane are discouraged from entering the circulatory road. Lastly, if present, pedestrian accommodations should be designed concurrently with the bypass lane and is typically advised to provide a six foot minimum pedestrian refuge island between the bypass lane and the roundabout entry lane. The performance check should be analyzed for the right turn bypass lane using the methodology discussed in other methods of this trading material. For the fastest path, the right turn R5 speed should be evaluated. Additionally, if the exit geometry is modified during the development of the right turn bypass lane, fastest paths for other entry legs should be re-evaluated. Site distance should be evaluated for the stopping site distance as shown in the figure to the right, as well as the circuitry road and pedestrian crosswalk at the exit. Additionally, turning movements for the design vehicle should be run through the bypass lane. Please refer to the GDOT Roundabout Design Guide for additional performance check guidance. Like with the design of the roundabout itself, designing the bypass lane is an iterative process that will require adjustments to meet the performance check requirements and the design criteria. The examples below show the most common issue we see when reviewing roundabouts. In these examples, the approach angle of the bypass lane is too small at the entry. This causes poor driver view angle for approaching vehicles due to the required head turn angle of the driver. This can yield to a higher crash rate at the entry point, and we typically recommend revising the bypass lane alignment. For the remainder of this module, we will walk through the design elements of the right turn bypass lane in MicroStation. For this demonstration, we have a single lane roundabout that we will be implementing a right turn bypass lane on the eastern leg. Prior to designing a bypass lane, it is important to review the 85th percentile queue for both the roundabout entry and the bypass lane. For both lanes, you will want to make sure that you have provided enough length so that the queues do not impact the adjacent lane. The necessary queue length will impact consideration of whether to develop the bypass with a standard taper and decel lane or whether a shorter bypass where no parallel lane is utilized. For this example, we will assume a queue and deceleration length of 200 feet. You will notice that just beyond the 200 foot offset that there is a tangent that runs adjacent to the splitter island. This may serve as a good start to our right turn bypass lane. To 
Start the right turn bypass lane. We will offset 16 feet from the edge line. We can then extend a tangent towards the roundabout. As you will see, this tangent would re-intersect the approach lane to the roundabout, creating a conflict point. There are several approaches designers can take to uh, mitigate this conflict, and the first that we will explore is introducing a radii on the final approach to the roundabout. We can start with around a 250-foot radius and see what that yields. By running it at a tangent off of the right turn bypass lane that we've started to establish, we can run the tangent towards the north exit of the roundabout. We can then offset 16 feet to provide our preliminary roundabout geometry. As we review this preliminary geometry, we will note several positive attributes. First, a separation between the right turn bypass lane and the, the roundabout circulatory road. This will make it difficult for motorists to re-enter the roundabout from the bypass lane. Also, this approach angle would accommodate truck movements well and not require a large entry at the end of the bypass lane. However, the driver view angle is less than the desired 75 degree minimum and therefore we'll iterate the design to see if we can further improve the view angle. Like with many elements of the roundabout design, designing the right turn bypass lane is an iterative process. A smaller or larger radius may be needed. The end goal is to find the right radius that achieves good driver view angle, a snagging effect of the bypass lane to discourage drivers from re-entering the roundabout from the bypass lane, trucks accommodations for the right turn, and speed control of the right turn. We previously ran through this process for this example and found that a 400 foot radius works well for this roundabout geometry. To accommodate the 400 foot radius, we will delete our preliminary line work and create a tangent from the right turn bypass lane that intersects at the midpoint of the north leg splitter island. We then will offset 16 feet. We can trim our edge lines accordingly. The next thing we will want to do is check the view angle for motorists. To do this, we will copy in our R1, R2, and R3 fastest paths maneuver for the northbound direction. We can set the fastest path to a working level and turn off the other fastest path. Then we will want to trim the fastest path to the midpoint of the conflict line at the right turn bypass entry point. Using the intersection site distance criteria described in the GDOT roundabout guide, we previously determined that a site distance of 158 feet is required for this example. So we will trim the fastest path line to 158 feet. Next, we will offset eight feet from the yield line at the right turn bypass entry. This provides the location of the driver eye, which is the point at which a vehicle using the right turn bypass lane will need an unobstructed view from. We will next connect a line from this point to the start of the fastest path. We can then check our view angle, which shows that we now have a view angle of 84 degrees. Typically, an angle of 75 degrees or greater is desirable. Our next order of operation for designing the right turn bypass lane will be to establish the curb line along the outside edge. To do this, we will want to evaluate the truck turning movements for the bypass. 
We previously ran this with the WB67 making a right turn along here. Please refer to other portions of this training material for information on how to provide turning movements. As you can see, the truck's back right tire would oversteer on top of the curb. To better facilitate the truck, we will use the fillet command and introduce a 50-foot radius. As you can see, with the 50-foot radius, there's still over-tracking. Increasing by another 25 to 75 brings us a bit closer, but you can still see some potential problematic areas. We will now try going up by additional 5 to 80. And 80 does feet does yield us a radius that would generally be considered acceptable. We will now want to create the face of our curve by offsetting two feet from the gutter pan line. After which we will offset an additional six inches to create our back of curve line. We can then trim some of our line work. And we now have a preliminary right turn bypass lane entry. We will next want to evaluate the fastest path for this configuration. We previously ran through this and found that this geometry affords a fastest path R5 of 24 miles per hour with a radius of 155 feet. This is generally considered acceptable. And given that we have an acceptable head angle, fastest path, turning movement, and snag from the circulatory road with this alignment, we do now have a geometry that would be acceptable and we can continue to progress our design to finalize the concept for the roundabout. I'm gonna try to clean up and design the splitter island separating the right turn bypass lane from the roundabout entry lane. One of the things you will note with the entry lane is it was previously designed to accommodate right turn vehicles. Since there is now a right turn by bypass lane, this is no longer necessary. We can create a tangent from the edge line to the outside of the inscribed circle on this approach and then trim the line work as necessary to We can then extend the yield line across the right turn bypass lane. And we now have our edge lines for the splitter island. While not always necessary at this point in development, I will quickly demonstrate how to create the splitter island itself. We will want to do a two foot offset from the left edge of the right turn bypass lane, as well as a three foot offset from the inscribed circle. We can create a two foot radius here and a variable radius depending on the geometrics on the uh, approach nose. We'll try 15, which doesn't work. So our best bet may be to implement a tangent along the entryway for a little bit. We can try a 15 foot radius here. And it does appear that we have a geometric for the island that should be sufficient. On the approach side, 
we will do a three foot offset from both the edge lines and then a three foot radius using the fillet command. We can then delete the excess line work and connect our nose to our curve lines using tangent commands. We can then offset half a foot to provide our back a curve line. One of the advantages to developing this now is it allows us to check our pedestrian refuge island size. Typically, we would want to provide a six foot minimum pedestrian refuge between the roundabout entry lane and the right turn bypass lane in order to provide a three stage crossing. The alignment of the crosswalk can be established tangentially to the crosswalk at the roundabout entry as shown here or perpendicular to the bypass lane. The last design element of the right turn bypass lane will be to develop the start of the lane. As previously mentioned in this example, we are assuming that a 200 foot deceleration and storage lane is sufficient. Given the geometrics of this configuration with an entry lane and a right turn bypass lane, the nose of the splitter island may be a good location to begin our lane at. We can then offset 100 feet. And approximate the start of the right turn bypass lane. We're currently showing curb running for this entire area, but it is generally not necessary more than 50 feet in advance of the crosswalk or 100 feet in advance of the yield line. As such, we can offset 100 feet in this example and end our curve within this general area. We can then run with a narrower 12 foot lane within this area and a five foot shoulder. Clean this up a little bit. We'll adjust the lane add. And we can use a fillet command to connect this radius to this edge line. We have a 384 foot radius. So maybe around a 500 foot radius to connect the two will be sufficient. We can do a five foot offset. Create the shoulder line up to the curb start. And then we can extend this curb to the intersection to identify the area where a nose down for the curb would be and the start of the curb can commence. This ends our demonstration on how to set up a right turn bypass lane for a roundabout.